Now to get started, we're going to go up to the upper left hand corner and go to File Menu, New, Project. Now if you look at the left hand side, you should see Visual C Sharp as an option. Um, and that would be important because you should have selected C Sharp as your preferred programming language during the installation of Visual Studio. And we should have Windows Desktop uh, basically templates installed uh, to do a desktop environment uh, type of application. And usually there are three different applications that you can choose from. There's WPF, which stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. There's Win Windows Forms or WinForms applications and console applications, which don't really have a user uh, interface. Now, we're going to be training everything using WinForms or Windows Forms applications. Now, why would I do that compared to WPF? Windows Forms is a little bit easier to learn. Um, it's an older technology, but almost everything that you need to do from a development point of view for making add-ons with Tecla, etc., you can do all of that with WinForms. It's much easier to get started with basic controls, and you don't have to deal with the whole uh, XAML or XML interface that you typically would with WPF. So we're gonna go ahead and start with Windows Forms and we're just gonna call this application lesson number two. Now I'm not gonna put a space bar in here, I'm gonna intentionally put 02 here um, because really when we name this application in this project, it's also gonna create the name of the executable that we're going to create to run our application. And you can have spaces in there, but uh, just from a programming standard, typically you don't want to do that. So I'm gonna leave the space out of there. Now you can put this anywhere you want. And for now, we're gonna go ahead and use uh, the default .NET framework that's installed. Now I'm using um, Visual Studio 2017 because I do a little bit of older development um, and older versions of Tecla. You can still use Visual Studio 2022, even if you're back in version 2018, 2019, 2020 of Tecla structures, not a problem. Um, it's just that you'll have to look and see when you make applications what .NET framework is Tecla structure, a certain version of Tecla structures uh, sort of driven and built for. Now, in this case, we're not going to worry about that too much here. Uh, we'll just leave that at default. Now, I do tend to say create directory for solution. I actually uncheck this. I don't like creating a separate directory. Uh, I just want everything all in one folder. So I leave these two unchecked here. And then we'll just go ahead and say OK. Now, what will happen is a new project is going to get created. So it'll create a folder. Um, it opens up this form one uh, designer, which is basically like the main entry point of your application. So when you actually build and create an executable, or if you debug this application, it's going to basically start the application with this form one. And all this form is here is, is that it's an empty form that I can put buttons and text boxes and controls on. So from an overall layout of a visual studio, Essentially, we have our code view or our designer view. And if I actually double click on this form, it will uh, open me up into the coding in the back end. And it actually puts me inside of this event handler for this is called form one, you know, which is one form here on, in our application. And that's just a default name. And we can put some code in here that's going to happen whenever the form loads. That's basically what this is. This is a form load event. And we can put code in here that does those things. Now, basically the form itself is a class. And so I'm gonna explain this later, but classes are essentially objects in C Sharp and C Sharp, C -sharp is an object oriented programming language. So you create objects and you have properties and fields on those and functions and, and methods that do stuff. And so forms uh, you know, are actually a class and then they have stuff that lives on, on that. So watch this, if I actually go to toolbox here, and I open up, you might, you might see this by default, you can just actually double click and a button will then be added to your form. Or if I double click, a checkbox will be added to my form. And then here, when you click on button, you'll see at the lower right hand corner, uh, there's a properties window. If your properties window doesn't appear by default, you can actually come in here underneath view and then you should be able to go to a properties window at the bottom and you'll see that that will then appear. So as I check on these different things, you'll see that it goes to that control and this is checkbox one, this is button one, and then I can actually come in here and I can change this to alphabetical order or by groups. So if I wanted to change the, the text from button one to something else, I can say, hello. And I can just type that in there, press enter, and you'll see that the text for that button now says hello. Now, what's cool about this is you can just click on the button and you can drag with your mouse and resize the button. You can change the font. You can do all sorts of things. Now, I'm not gonna do a ton of training on all the individual components here, but I just want you to see how easy it is to actually 
um, you know, add controls and things to your, uh, basically to your application. Now, let's say we want a label on here. So that might be like a description or something like that for, for a button or for an option. Then we might have here like a text box. So let's just find text box and then we'll place that. So you can either drag the controls or you can double click and it'll add that to your form. So here's a good case where I would have a label and I would want that before a text box. So I'll just say uh, here in the text, I'll just call this field one, right? And then that could be the entry point one and then you can just control C, you know, or you can right click and you can say copy and you can paste that and then you can just change that to field two for the other option. So even if you did a basic application like add number one or field one plus field two, then essentially you can have the button that says, okay, add those things together and then it will give you a result. You can also window around all of these controls and basically move them around and align them however you want to. I can just delete these by uh, selecting it and then pressing delete or right click and say delete. So very easy interface and Windows Forms again is really easy to use. You can just resize the form here however you need to. Let's say we want to rename this from form one. So we'll go to the properties and we'll just call this lesson two. And here the space bar doesn't matter. Now, if we had an icon uh, like a company logo or something like that, we could actually set the icon. So again, I'm just showing you the fundamental basics of how to kind of add controls and different things. And you can sort of explore these. And then, you know, just like every other programmer in today's world, the way that you learn more about specific controls or specific things in C-sharp once you've done this basic training is you actually do a search for those online. And I'll cover that in the last uh, training video in this series to show you how you actually learn how to do stuff by searching, for example, code online a lot of times. All right, so now we've got basically our form view here. Now watch this, if I double click on this hello button, that now creates a button one click event handler. So I could put some code in here that actually adds field one and field two together. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm just trying to tour you around Visual Studio, but here we have our main form designer and if you actually see there's different tab pages so we can actually go into the code itself and then we have the designer. And then over on the right hand side, there's what's called a solution explorer. And this is basically when we created the project, it creates a solution file because you can actually have multiple uh, projects underneath uh, one overall solution. Like if you're doing a massive build of lots of tools, I won't explain that too much here, but here's our uh, form one, which is the main form that we created when we uh, created this Windows form application by default. And then there's references to the actual .NET framework. I'm gonna try to not overwhelm you too much with these, but these are basically um, libraries that uh, you can reference to use different tools on your Windows machine for reading and writing files, for drawing graphics, for creating the form itself and these inputs and these controls. So pretty much all of these libraries or these DLLs essentially of the .NET framework are uh, referenced in this application allowing you to create robust applications or programs that you need. All right, then we covered properties at the lower right hand side. So overall, the way the interface works is you have your toolbox on the left of different controls. You have your solution explorer here on the upper right, which basically maps and shows you the form and different classes and references you have in your application. And then in the lower right, we have our properties. Now you can drag and drop these wherever you want. Like you can move them around. Um, I just tend to keep them by default wherever they are. You can also uh, basically just use these controls to hide specific things, the thumb uh, tags here basically to sort of hold specific things. Now I tend to almost always keep uh, my solution explorer, my properties window, and typically my toolbox here because I'm almost always using these all the time. Um, but these are the basic components you need. Now to finish this up, we've got a few different controls that we added here. We made a new application. Now let's say that we actually want to run this executable and test it out. Well, if we actually just press this play button here where it says start, so there's a green like play or, or triangle button. And if we just press this button here, it'll actually build the executable and then it will load that executable here. We can start typing in fields. We could press our button. Now nothing is happening because we don't have any code that's behind this, but I just wanted you to see how basic and simple it is to create an application, put some controls on it, and then create that actual executable. Now over here in your solution explorer, you can actually right click on this and you can say open folder in file explorer. So that's gonna open up Windows Explorer 
and it'll bring you here to your specific spot. And then basically what I can do is if I go to this bin or binaries folder and then debug, because we're in debug mode, it actually created the lesson2.exe. So if I just double click on that, that's actually going to open up my application as well. So that's the same thing as running this start button. It'll, uh, the Visual Studio will build the application and it'll uh, basically launch that exe or that executable. So there you go. This is the very basics of getting started with Visual Studio. We have our main designer view and our code view. Then we have our solution explorer. We have our properties window for when not we click on different like controls. And we can see all the different properties we can control. And then we have our selection of different things that we can actually add to our form, um, allowing us to uh, or allowing the user to enter any kind of inputs that we'll actually pass on to our code.